Hello and welcome to Adobe Photoshop CS2 and today's tutorial on the Smart Sharpening Filter. Now there's some good news and there's some bad news to go along with this particular filter. The good news is that after 10 years, or well over 10 years, we've finally got another sharpening filter inside of Photoshop and it's turned out to be a real improvement on the already capable Unsharp Mask. The bad news is that it's only available inside of Photoshop CS2 and future releases of the software. Now before we get into the Smart Sharpening filter, if you're wanting to know how sharpening works inside of Photoshop, as well as how to use the Unsharp Mask, then you're probably best viewing my other tutorial entitled Basic Sharpening before viewing this one. OK, I'm going to start off here by opening up this document entitled Squares, as I did in the Basic Sharpening tutorial, and then I'm going to go in and choose from my filters menu um, the submenu sharpen and then select my smart sharpening option now by our sharpening standards we get an absolutely huge dialog box here with a very generous preview pane and I'm going to start off by zooming into about 400 percent and then moving the preview down so we can see the bottom of the two shapes now on the right hand side you can see that we've got our control panel which is headed by these basic and advanced radio buttons and for the moment we're going to make sure that we've got the basic option selected now down here we've got an amount value which does exactly the same as the amount value inside the unsharp mask so the higher we have this value the more contrast we're adding to our edges I'm going to set the amount here to about 500% for purposes of illustration. We've also got the radius value down here, which once again does exactly the same job as the radius value inside the Unsharp Mask. So the more we add to this value, the wider we're making our edges. And I'm going to set our radius here to about 10 pixels. OK, we're creating quite an interesting effect in the preview panel. Now you'll really notice that we've got two useful features from the Unsharp Mask alive and well inside the Smart Sharpening dialog box. But what we haven't got is a threshold value, which if you remember isn't something that we used to use that much anyway. Instead we've got two far better options, those being the Remove option and the More Accurate option. OK, this is where things start getting really interesting, because what we can do here is remove three different kinds of blurring, those being Gaussian, Lens, and Motion Blurs. Now what's interesting is that if we select Gaussian Blur, first of all, we're going to be using the same algorithm as the Unsharp Mask does. So our Smart Sharpening filter is now calculating how to remove the blurring in exactly the same way as the Unsharp Mask would. Next we have an algorithm for removing a lens blur, which is the type of blurring you get in a photograph when perhaps the focus isn't fully locked onto the subject. It's what a lot of people refer to as a soft photograph, or one that has an incorrect depth of field. Anyway, the lens blur option is one that I typically use ahead of the Gaussian blur, but it's a really good idea to try both of them out and see which one comes out with the better effect. Finally, we have an option for removing a motion blur, which is caused by the subject or the camera moving slightly whilst the shutter of the camera is open. And you'll notice once I've selected this option, we get access to a motion button in which we can select the angle of motion we're trying to eliminate from the image. And this is a value you're just going to have to play around with until you find the correct angle and amount. Some people use the measure tool but then you're kind of guessing that in the first place as well, so you might as well just eyeball things over here in the Smart Sharpening dialog box. Now I'm going to reselect uh, the Lens Blur option. Now the last option down here is the More Accurate checkbox, and this is a little like applying the effect twice, as what you're effectively doing here is producing a more detailed sharpen where it's bringing out as much information as it can inside your image. The downside to more accurate is that it tends to bring out all the noise in the image. So when you're trying to sharpen an image that has a lot of artefacting going on, 
chances are you're going to want to avoid the more accurate option. Now one of the problems of sharpening in general is that you tend to darken the shadows and lighten the highlights. And what you'll sometimes see occurring is a haloing effect where the sharpening gets to a point where it's just creating black and white edges. Usually this will just be happening to small areas of your image at a time, but it's an undesired effect anyway, and it's an effect that you really are going to want to get rid of. Um, whereas the unsharp mask, when you're using that filter, you really can't do much about the haloing effect. But now inside of the smart sharpening filter, you can do something about it by turning on the advanced tab, um, which will reveal a shadow and highlight tab down here in the dialog box. So if we go ahead and open up our shadow tab, we have controls available to affect just the edges that have been made darker. Likewise with the highlight tab, we can affect only the edges that have been made lighter. And in each tab we have three sliders, and remember we're looking at just the shadows here. So we have our tonal width slider, which allows us to choose what percentage of the brightness values in the image starting of course with black we're going to affect so for instance 1% would mean we're affecting just a few brightness values from pure black where we're not going to see much difference at all on screen um, and then we have maybe a hundred percent where we would be affecting all the brightness values in the image and I'm going to select a value of 50% so I'm affecting everything from black fading down to medium grey now if we go ahead and increase the radius value to around 15 pixels, that's going to give us a softer transition. And this value controls how thick the shadows need to be before we include them into our adjustments. Now the reason we're not seeing anything on screen is because the fade value is set to zero. And if we increase this, we're going to be fading our shadows back in at the rate determined by the tonal width and radius values we entered a few moments ago. OK, I'm going to go ahead and open up another image called Rally, so we can try out our smart sharpening for real. Now this image is actually a screenshot from an old 8mm analogue videotape, and shot in about 1990, so it's not of any great quality. And you can see that we've already got blown highlights, like this one here on the windscreen, that we're just not going to be able to improve, but we'll see what happens anyway. I'm going to select Smart Sharpen from my Filters menu up here at the top of the screen and I'm going to enter an amount value of 300% and then a radius of 10 pixels and we can afford to go overboard here a little bit so we can see the benefits of the shadow and highlight controls in a minute and I'm going to change the type of blur we're removing to Lens Blur and because we're working with a fairly low definition image we've already got too much noise going on so I'm going to leave the more accurate option turned off. If we turn that on remember all we're going to do is exaggerate the noise and distortion we've already got inside this particular image. Now you can see that I've sharpened the image way too much so I'm going to compensate for that by using the advanced options. I'm going to click the shadows tab and then enter a tonal width of 70% I wouldn't usually go much above 50%, but keep in mind we did add too much sharpening to the image in the first place. I'm then going to enter a radius value of 50 pixels, and then fade the adjustments in until I see something I like. Probably around about 60% is going to be good for this image. Now I'm going to switch to my highlights tab, and enter a tonal width of 50%. A radius of 37 pixels and then fade it into around about 35% so we're not being quite as harsh as we were in the shadows tab. Now I'm going to switch back to my sharpening tab and reduce the amount value to 150% and then the radius value to about 6 pixels. And finally before we click OK to accept the changes we have an option of saving all of our smart sharpening settings as a preset for future use and we can do that by clicking the floppy disk icon over here and then following the instructions on screen. Well I hope you found this tutorial on smart sharpening to be helpful. Thanks very much for watching.